Hi, my name is Yasmin Terehi, and this is Startup Confessionals, where we interview startup founders and entrepreneurs from the Middle East and Africa. We'll learn about some of the biggest lessons these founders discovered on their journey from the personal to the professional and share how they keep themselves motivated. Today's episode is with Amr Shadi, who has two decades experience in building and scaling startups globally. He co-founded Tribal, a Silicon Valley-based crypto-powered payments and financing platform that helps emerging market SMBs grow and compete in a global economy. The company started as a spinoff from his NYU research on using AI to predict startup success. Tribal raised $163 million in total funding from a number of different funds and investors. And Amr started his first company at 22, bootstrapping it to a multi-million dollar business. And I'm so excited to welcome Amr to the show today. So welcome, Amr. Thank you, Yasmin. Great to be here. So Amr, uh, could we just dive in and share your value proposition in your own words with our audience? What is Tribal Credit? Yeah, of course. And um, and I think you mentioned it, Yasmin. We are here to help SMEs and startups in emerging markets grow and compete in a global economy. So how do we do this? Um, the main thing is we are driving so much efficiency into their financial operations by providing them with a very rich digital experience. Um, think of it as a one-stop shop for their treasury services, expense management. We give them access to payment trails, um, corporate cards uh, uh, in partnership with Visa. They get access to physical cards, uh, virtual cards. They actually get access to non-card payment trails, so they can uh, make a swift payment to 180 plus countries, uh, access to local payment networks. Um, For example, I could be in the UAE and make a payment to uh, someone in the U.S. using the ACH network. Um, So we have 15 of these local country networks already integrated, and we add uh, this other layer of financing on top of all of this um, so we can actually extend credit to our customers anywhere between 30 to 120 days. Um, the other thing that we're very kind of bullish on is um, is crypto as well. So we're really using crypto to drive even more efficiency to payments, to financing, um, and really make that uh, experience and cost advantage, pass it on to our customers um, and kind of just incentivize the system around us, uh, around tribal and this community that we're building um, with our customers and partners. Amazing. And uh, Amr, which countries do you service? Is it truly you know every country or are, do, are you primarily focused on specific uh, countries that have a, a more difficult time with accessing credit? Yeah, it's a great question. We have we are right now in 22 countries, more than 22 countries. Um, and what we found that's just incredible is that founders and you know startups, SMEs, in UAE, in Saudi, in Egypt, are facing the same problems as others in Mexico, in Brazil, in Colombia, in Chile, in Peru. So we we have seen this problem um, just exist in, in 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 the problems that they're facing with with just banks trying to get access to corporate cards and trying to get approved for this credit. Um, it's just incredible how it's it's pretty much the same everywhere um so we we are very big in in the east we are very big in in lat m and we're growing into other markets uh, during 2022 amazing and amr why did you decide to use crypto and uh particularly which cryptocurrencies are you using uh and why yeah so we've been uh, since since we started, we've we've always seen how crypto can really boost uh, and accelerate what Tribal is is trying to achieve, and can really impact the experience of our customers. And um, we're 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 doing this through many things. We've really announced two of those already, which is um, payments and the financing. So um, with with payments, we see how that can really make a big a big impact. Imagine making instant cross-border payments uh, from one country to the other. So these are some of the experiences that we're bringing to our customers, especially because many of them have these problems of 
very urgent critical payments that need to get from point A to point B. Uh, very hard to track. Sometimes these payments get stuck or lost uh, in the middle, and you really have to pay almost like $50 or $100 just to be able to track a payment um, in more details. Um, so that's that's kind of one of one of the use cases of crypto in in what we're doing. Uh, on the financing side, there's just a huge this huge stablecoin economy. We're looking at if we're looking at the market cap of stablecoins going from twenty billion dollars to more than one hundred twenty billion dollars in just a few months. It's it's pretty insane how all of this market. This market cap is really looking for yield. It's looking for returns, and there are just a lot of problems in kind of the in the current over collateralized uh, lending that's happening. That's trying to generate yield, um, and it's just based on how good the market is, uh, whether it's a bull market or a bear market, and the yield generation for on stable coins is just not consistent. And uh, we're solving a problem for crypto by bringing a very um, just healthy, sustainable yield generation and putting crypto to real world use. So we have Stellar um, Development uh, Foundation as one of our investors. And we've been working very, very closely with Stellar to bring real world uh, use cases to stable coins um so we've stellar was also part not just of our uh, on our equity but also on our on our latest debt round and we've um, and we uh, closed one of the first if not the first hybrid uh crypto and fiat uh, debt rounds so we're really taking kind of this stellar usdc and bringing it to real world use cases and uh, just driving um, we're driving more for SMEs using using crypto. Uh, so that's that's really what we're using crypto for today. And uh, we've got more things that we will be announcing hopefully very soon. Exciting. Oh, wow. Very, very fascinating. So Stellar is really um, the company that you've been partnering with a, a lot on bringing these, these yeah. use cases. So Amr, why did you decide to tackle this particular industry and solve this particular problem? The way this all started really was, um, as you know, Yasmin, you know, I've been very much involved with the startup ecosystem in multiple ways. So I think we've uh, we've both served on tech ready board uh, together. We've crossed paths there. We've I've been very much engaged with Endeavor for a very long time as well. I've always been just very keen on just working with startups, with founders, um, and just uh, just being part of that that journey one way or the other. Um, whether it's kind of investing or or mentoring or even learning from from a lot of these founders, and there are just so many opportunities at Equity and Endeavor for this. So what happened then was I was working on my Master of Science at NYU. And I thought about, you know, how do we use machine learning? And my thesis was then about um, really using machine learning to underwrite this whole new um, startup economy and really try to find these amazing founders that you can really work with one way or the other um, as early as possible. So that was kind of my passion. And, um, you know, we did a really good job with uh, you know, we were very blessed. Alhamdulillah, we just did uh, the results of the machine learning algorithm were 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 just uh, you know over the top, and the ability to generate uh, you know amazing returns if you're going to be investing in these founders was just um, was very high, and and we got very encouraged to take it to the next level after we finished that project at NYU. So we actually commercialized that machine learning algorithm, which is really the core of what Bible does today. Um, so the way you can use this, uh, this algorithm that we've built is you can invest in uh, in these companies and we have funds that are licensing our, our scores to actually um, detect and find these early companies, amazing companies as early as possible and, and put money in them. That's one use case. We had I have had friends who asked me about these startups, and you can work for one of these companies. So we score these companies as early as possible, and you can you can actually use that same score to go and uh, be part of a company that has a very high chance of success. And the other thing that we were doing was 
you know, as uh, as we started, we started licensing licensing this to financial institutes who want to provide financial services to these companies um, again as early as possible. So, um, you know, we we started with the data play. We saw the different use cases, and then we um, we realized that the financial services is really one of the highest leverages that can really impact the countries and the economies that we will be operating in. I mean, they, you only get to invest in a certain number of companies. Well, with financial services, you can do a lot more, right? So, you know, we have a thousand plus customers. Um, it would be hard to say we've invested in a thousand plus customers. So it's, as, it's really as close as I can get to working with amazing people uh, on math. So Amr, when did when was kind of the moment that you realized you had product market fit? And I think also what you what you kind of speak about is like just the pivot, right, of version one of the product to a new version of the product. I think a lot of people yeah. assume, right, that they they need to get version one and sort of iterate just on this like exact idea of what the product looks like from day one. And I, you know, there's so many stories of companies that started out sometimes in a completely different industry, you know, entirely yeah. and then transition. Yeah. So I, I love, I love that there has been such a, um, you know, an evolution, um, of, of tribal. And so, yeah, so I'm curious, like when was the moment that you realized that you had product market fit for maybe this like later version of the product? And are you planning to expand, uh, to other markets and, and also I, I imagine expanding your product, you know, versioning entirely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, you know, it's it's a it's a great story. I think, uh, you know, I'd love to share with you just in, in a little bit more detail what happened because we, I think, we did a big mistake that others uh, I see do all the time. And uh, as founders, you've got your investors and you have, you know, maybe your customers and maybe just even between the founders themselves. And what we started to do, um, I think it was June 2018, we've got all these you know, scores and use cases and what we can do. And we started asking for, for advice, bouncing ideas off of people, right? And I think that was the worst thing that we could ever do. So we talked to our investors and we said, well, we're thinking of doing this. We're thinking of doing this. We had some amazing advisors on board and we, you know, we gave them all these opportunities opportunities that we can pursue with with what we have and uh the worst thing i think we could ever do was just ask for advice really and yeah and the worst thing that we could do is just sit as founders and discuss the different paths and try to get to consensus together um so it was it was a very turbulent time um and what th- what happened then that was transformational in how we approach this problem, I think all founders will get to that point, whether it's really early pre-product market fit, you know, post-product market fit, as you grow, as you continue to try and search for kind of these big bets that are going to be your next wave of growth, whether it's from series B to C or C to D or whatever it is. Um, the, the thing that really transformed how we're thinking about uh, approaching this problem was uh, just talking more and more to customers through design sprints, showing customers what looks like a finished product, not kind of not even just asking customers for their feedback or ideas. That's not that's not even it. I, we found a lot of leverage in showing customers something that looks like it's ready to ship or is in beta mode. And the best thing about design sprints is you can do this in four days. You can go from zero idea to user interviews and feedback in four days. So really adopted kind of design sprint. Uh, I did my own masterclass of uh, you know, coaching in, 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 uh, the, for design sprints. And uh, we started design sprinting all these different paths. We tested every. We tested pretty much every path that we had in mind, and we started going down that path of just designing, iterating, doing these design sprints, two weeks on, one week off, um, and just testing different propositions that way. And when we did the tribal proposition, 
you you could not imagine what the feedback was like. We had people who were trying to sign up like instantly on it. They wanted this. They're like, I I need this. This is how we raised our seat our seat stage. We raised our seat stage with customers recording voice recordings of what the product and how bad they wanted the product. Wow. Amazing. I love that using design sprints. So Amr, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what you sort of sacrificed personally in building this product and company. Can you talk to us about how your, you know, priorities may have shifted as you started to raise uh, more money um, and how that sort of affected your own kind of personal life? I think it's always been uh, very demanding from from day one. Um, I've been really just you know before before uh tribal you know I, I already had kind of previous startups so this kind of startup life has always been very very demanding i think you know you know what you give what you give up uh i've been doing this for a long time i think i almost forgot what we're giving up for it but uh you know, it's always it's always kind of the the same kind of ups and downs. The ups and downs are very extreme, and you know, trying to moderate yourself is always kind of the the, the best thing in my view. Um, so, I guess you give up uh, you give up a lot of a lot of um, you know you give up a lot of sleep. Of course, uh, you really need to kind of balance the time that you give family and the time that you give uh, the startup and the time that you have to give yourself as well. Um, and as you scale, I think what's what's interesting is as as we move from pre-seed to seed, the C to series A and A to B, you just it just changes kind of what 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 your priorities are uh, and the kind of work that you do and Honestly, the kind of stuff that you have to do for yourself to to stay in uh, stay in focus. So um, it's just been it's been a very uh, very interesting journey for me, and I've learned so much uh, just being in you know great situations and even more when it's like really bad situations. Wow. So, um, what about um, a specific person or maybe a mentor that? helped you on this journey? I think a lot of times people speak about going alone on this journey, but I'm curious, you know, if there are certain people that may have helped guide you through this process. Um, I got a lot of help from, from a lot of different people, uh, to be honest. So I think, you know, building on, on a little bit of what you, what you asked on, uh, before, I think, you know, I felt you, I felt more grounded again, in the highs and lows, just by me personally, I found like just, you know, being, trying to connect more and more with, with God has just given me that, um, that balance. And as, like I mentioned in, in, in really good and really, and really bad times. And then you have, for me, um, my father has, my father's been an entrepreneur since the very, very beginning, like the 60s, 70s kind of type of uh, entrepreneur who's still an entrepreneur and still running his own business. Um, I think that was a huge, huge help for me. Um, and just having someone very close as family to be able to talk about these things, I think made a huge difference for me. Um, we had, I had a very good support network, to be honest, with um, investors that understood, like one of the biggest problems I found especially in in in, uh, in the region is how um, early stage investors can be very susceptible and uh, uneasy with kind of a pre-product market fit company especially if they need to kind of pivot or think about something different I had the you know the blessing of, of a great, a great a cap table. I think we had great investors on board. Um, we had I was working very closely with uh, with Yusuf from Beco, and I think their 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 openness and appetite for change and, and encouraging that and encouraging kind of new ideas even in the pre seed was was very pivotal because you feel like you'll you'll be able to kind of keep going without having to worry about 
an immediate raise, impending raise. I think that was very, very supportive. So I would say, like honestly, for early stage founders, just making sure you do reference checks and understand which VCs will be with you in, in, in the good times, but which VCs kind of, how do they react if there is a change uh, in the model or a change in the business, um, I think is is imperative, especially in uh, the Middle East, especially in emerging markets. Um, so I think that really made a, a very big difference for me. And, and then I had a, a kind of a lifelong mentor who I've met since 2012, uh, amazing guy. I'm sure many of you will know him, Yusri Helmi. He's really the the reason why I made this move to uh, the U.S. and encouraged encouraged me to kind of think differently about um, you know about about the future, about what I can do, about my uh, you know my own potential. So Yusri has been kind of with with us on this journey from the very beginning as a mentor and then as an an investor, an, an mentor advisor. Um, investor and now he's on our board and above all or before all of this just a very good friend who's just you know a, a CEO who has done pretty much what I did and more um, and I think that made a huge difference for me um, as as we continue to build tribal. Amazing. Um, so Amr, what about uh, a favorite book or, um, you know, something that you're reading now or something that you may have read that was really inspiring to you? Yeah, I think, I guess top of mind for me is um, as you as you start scaling the company, you might feel the company slowing down in different parts. And then the book, I think a book that just came out that I, I'm very... Uh, you know, very excited about, and uh, a lot of the, the leadership team is reading, is called Amp It Up. I don't know if you've heard of that book okay. uh, by Frank Slootman, and um, he's he's I think now the CEO of Snowflake, and he you know built I think ServiceNow before that. Um, so great entrepreneur, great founder. He's scaled businesses before, and it's just about kind of this energy. How do you get energy and drive in your organization as you continue to grow the business and and scale? How do you keep that that uh, you know high speed rhythm uh, it, within the or the whole organization? So I think that's been one that I've been very um, very excited about. Um, the other one that I think was you know might not agree with absolutely everything in there, but I think it's uh, the way it's organized in the very short chapters is very helpful for founders. It's called the great CEO within. Hmm. Um, that's another one that's, that is kind of a, a nice re- reference for, for myself and other, other folks in the exec team. Um, I think these two have been pretty, pretty, uh, pretty helpful for me in, in my journey. The other one that I find very fascinating is uh how brands grow i think there's part one and part two part two is i think very relevant because it talks about emerging markets and you know maybe fintech and other stuff so i've been kind of trying to read that a little bit more as well so because these are kind of top of mind ones wonderful amazing i'll have to check those out i actually don't know any of them (laughs) so that's great (laughs) (laughs) bad thing for me oh no that's great it means you're you're ahead of your time so um i'll have to check those out (laughs) So Amr, we are um, unfortunately at time, but um, it's so wonderful to hear about your journey. And, you know, as the audience, as you kind of mentioned, I've known you for many years through sharing uh, both a board seat on TechWadi, and then also I've known you through the startup ecosystem in Silicon Valley. And I'm just so proud of everything that you've accomplished and the way that you have shown up as a leader. I think that there's so many people that have such great respect and reverence for how you've shown up um, and and also how you've shown up for not just your own startup, but other startups and the larger community. So thank you for for your time and thank you for, for everything. Thank you. That's so kind of you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So for our audience, thanks for joining and for listening to Startup Confessionals. <laughs>